You're tuned in to the Brand Ambassador Select Podcast. Welcome back to the Brand Ambassador Select Podcast, where we are showcasing the coolest brands and gifts while featuring movers and makers. I'm your host, Lenore, and it's time to make your wishes come true with the help of Wish Beads. They empower you to access your true abilities, dream your biggest dreams, and remain focused on them each and every single day. It's actually pretty cool. So these are the beads, and you get a chance to write your wish inside and stick it in there with the papers that are provided in the back. Now, their founder and CEO, Alexa Fisher, is on the line to share how we can take the next step towards our dreams. Alexa, welcome to the Brand Ambassador Select Podcast. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm so excited to hear all about Wish Bees. I don't want to like make too much noise when I like, you know, pick them up like that. <laughs> See, I told you it was going to fall down. So I'll hold it this way. Wish some Wish Beads. So uh, tell us about Wish Beads, what they are, how they work, and how we can get started. Absolutely. So essentially, Wish Beads are an intention setting bracelet and actually so much more. Um, inside every piece of jewelry is a cylinder and it's a place where you can write uh, a special wish or intention on a tiny piece of paper, roll it up and tuck it inside. And what happens is when you wear your wish and your intention, you remind yourself to stay focused on what matters most to you. So instead of getting lost in our very busy lives in all the ways that we get distracted and stressed out, by having a visual reminder, you stay inspired to keep it top of mind, to remind yourself to go from focusing on negatives or inner criticism and instead focusing on um, what you want to achieve in your life, what you imagine for your life, how you want to feel. So on one hand, we have intention setting jewelry. And then of course, I'll tell you about something I created called wish work, because sometimes it requires a little bit of work to make your wishes come true. Okay, let's start with opening it. I closed the box so nothing falls out this time. So if you get, if you do get wish beads, this is what they'll come in, a nice, cute little box. Now, I have the matte gray. I'm hoping they do come in different colors, right? They do. We have an extension, uh, extensive collection. One of our collections is called the Intention Collection, and it features incredibly high-quality stones. And each of these stones have different inherent properties. So with agate, you've got balance and stability. But let's say, for example, you have um, here. I'm have I have one of our best sellers, which is a gorgeous lapis lazuli, and that is for love and forgiveness. So you, each of the stones, oh, excuse me, love and protection. Um, Each of the stones has a different property. So let's say, for example, you're looking for um, some support with money. Uh, Our light jade um, offers uh, wealth and wisdom. So sometimes people love to shop by intention. We also offer different collections uh, with some imported um, African seed beads and recycled glass beads, which are handmade by artisans in Ghana, Africa. And, um, and all of them are meant to really find a style that really, what I call, sparks your heart and something that you want to wear on a regular basis. I actually have uh, wishbeads.com up in front of me on my computer. I like, I see that you have the matte jasper shine, which has a bunch of different colored stones that go around it. But I do love the rainbow sea sediment. I feel like that's just so great for like a summer vibe that you could be going for. Absolutely. That's part of our latest styles. And in fact, one of our Um, Our latest ones that we got in is our number one requested stone, which is Moonstone. It's a very beautiful kind of white opalescent stone. It's for divine feminine energy. Many people use Moonstone when they're trying to get pregnant. Although if you are not interested in getting pregnant, it also helps you connect with that feminine energy inside. So that's one that I'm finally so excited to get out into the world. Um, But again, it's really about finding something that resonates with you. Uh, At one point, especially in my live events, I'll have a menu of all of the different properties. And honestly, like when you look at that, you want all of the things, confidence, motivation and love and all the things. But I also believe in the power of intuition. So when you can kind of see what you're you're guided to and and something that really makes you happy. Yeah, that's usually the one that, that you're meant to have. It's like, can I have a bead that has all of them on it so I can feel <laughs> exactly. all the energy? Exactly. I want all the things. All is, the things. Is that what Rainbow does for me? Does Rainbow help me with everyone? I didn't think, yeah, I don't think I saw absolutely. that. Absolutely. <laughs> like a unicorn. Um, yeah. but, but in each, uh, in, in our jewelry, it actually, when you lift up the package underneath, it's revealed that we have this little pocket where we have wish papers. So these wish papers, um, they're actually little slices of paper that are the size of a fortune cookie message. 
and a little toothpick for easy rolling. And we instruct you how to write and roll and place your wish inside the cylinder. And then every day before you put it on, you tighten that cylinder to help you connect to your intention. And then also practically to keep the cylinder from twisting off. Okay. I'm going to, I still have mine on here. Um, it looks so nice, but I want to twist. Where do I, where do I twist here? Right? Uh, yeah. Just the cap. Yeah. You just unscrew the cap and you'll see that there's an open cylinder right there. And that's directly where you tuck in your wish. Exactly. It's like so exactly. tiny. I don't know if anyone can see it so tiny. Yeah, exactly. And so that's why I included a toothpick. It actually helps with the rolling of the paper. So it's nice and tight. And then you have this little secret that you carry with you. Uh, one of my customers shared with me that her, she just, you know, she was working towards a wish. It actually came true. I provide extra wish paper. So she was ready to insert another wish. And she discovered that her daughter had taken out the wish and written her a secret note. And I was like, that is the cutest thing ever. She's like, well, now I can't, I have to keep this note in there. I'm just going to buy another bracelet. <laughs> <laughs> stick, stick another wish in there. So you can do whatever you want. But um, the idea is to really uh, find something that really you have been wanting to create in your life and, uh, and, and make sure that it is top of mind. So I want to hear about this 21 day journey of wish work. Cause that's, that's what you just uh, are now debuting, right? Well, absolutely. It's it's actually been a part of, of the process, but now I'm really creating that narrative a little bit more front and center. My background is first as a professional actress, then I was teaching and still do teach confidence and communication skills. And I knew, and I worked with so many clients about the power of having goals and taking really powerful, simple steps towards achieving them. It's not a mystery. Like that's how things happen. Um, of course, those are all fueled by positive thoughts. Uh, the idea for wish beads literally came downloaded to me in the shower. I was not anticipating creating a physical product. It was not in my mindset at all, but I did believe in the power of inspiring people to take action towards their deepest desires. So the wish work was actually very much a part of, uh, of what I saw and I felt, and I knew could be helpful tools for people. And Quite simply, uh, the wish work begins with a guided visualization. Even before you make your wish, you are offered an opportunity to quiet your mind, close your eyes, and I literally have an audio recording where I guide you through an experience of picturing what your life would look like if you are, if, as if everything felt just right. Because for me, wishing is not about necessarily wishing for things or for business titles or a certain amount of money in your bank account. Uh, there's nothing wrong with those things, but really it's a feeling that's inside of us where everything is just as it's meant to be. There's a great feeling of presence, appreciation, uh, safety, you name it. What are the things that make you feel whole and make you feel um, alive? And so because of my background as a teacher, I thought, okay, well, let's give people that experience because on one hand, we can have conscious wishes. Great. That's fine. But for some people, they want to go a little bit deeper and just take a peek at what the deepest part of their being is really longing for. So I do that by a guided visualization. Uh, and then next follows 21 days of wildly simple exercises. And it, there's as simple as the first day is, you know, time to smile, noticing smiles throughout the day or noticing uh, lyrics uh, that are playing on a, a song that randomly plays throughout the day? And is there a hidden message for you? The entire idea behind this is rooted in the idea that we can break our habitual patterns, the ways that we show up, we see and experience the world to just start noticing something new, something that was there all along, but we just didn't pay attention to it. And when you have a framework, a little game that you can play that's in alignment with your wish, suddenly you do start to experience the synchronicities, you experience support, you open your perception up to new people, new ideas, and that's what sets the wheels in motion to creating a new powerful habit of taking action towards your wish. And, um, and I've heard time and time again that people are like, my goodness, what the heck? Like things are happening <laughs> and things are showing up. And it's not that I'm ever telling anybody your wish is gonna come true in 21 days, no. I don't know what your wish is. I have no idea. 
But what is going to happen in 21 days is that you will develop a new skill, you will develop a new habit, and you will leave this experience feeling far more hopeful and connected and excited to keep going. It's all about that positive energy, I feel. Like that's Absolutely. that's what it is. And I do have, this is the journal, right? The 21 Day Action Journal? Correct. That is, that is. And then I wrote a book called Wish Work that was published uh, not too long ago. So it began as a journal. And then of course I had more to say uh, because that's the nature <laughs> of the beast. And, um, and I started putting together. So this also functions as a journal, but it tells a little bit more of the story of how this works, the principles behind it, my own journey of creating an entire company out of nothing, um, mostly to inspire people to say, look, you never know what your path is going to be. You never know how it's going to unfold. And when we can have a positive attitude, as you just said, suddenly our obstacles become our teachers. Uh, we develop the ability to really understand that we are in control of our destiny instead of blaming whoever you want to blame, whether it's your family or an administration or the state of the world or who knows what. We are the agents of change. And if we want to change our circumstances or the world, it has to begin with us. I want to go to a random day in our journal, okay? I usually go to the number I seven. I love it. Let's do it. I usually pick seven because I like the number seven. It's not lucky to me, but like I'm going to break out of my comfort zone today for you, Alexa. Uh, okay. So just going to do Stop here. <laughs> You got to make the sound effects or it's not real, right? You do. <laughs> I, I create so many sound effects in life. I don't know why, but I think it's fun. Yeah. People just laugh at me. I'm like, guys, leave me alone. Okay. <laughs> oh, of course. I land on day 17, which is get the scoop. <laughs> Are we doing some dirty work here today? We going undercover? Sure? Like, what does this tell? Okay. So this one says, so am I the witness, right? Is that is that how I'm reading it? Yes. You're invited to witness something today. So okay. this is what we're inviting you to witness. It says, wish-making takes desire, clarity, drive, and often a bit of research, mm, like Facebook stalking. Uh, when it comes to making <laughs> your wish come true, what's one thing you need to find, solve, or figure out? Uh, I don't know. So I have to set a timer for 10 minutes and do some research. Notice how it feels to research and get a little closer to the answers you need. Do you feel excited, curious, optimistic, motivated to keep working, etc.? And then now I have space that says I can write. What's one thing you could beg, borrow, rent, buy, or do right now that will help you get closer to your wish? For starters, why not simply Google how to insert probably what your wish is supposed to be, right? Exactly. Exactly. The invitation with the journal as with the book is that you do something during the day and then you reflect on it at night. The actual act of writing down um, anchors your thoughts and experiences in a deeper part of your awareness. And so in a way, you almost uh, tap into and anchor that energy, something that you created during the day, and you help yourself remember, wow, I am actually more powerful to take action. So in this case, I have people, I've heard you know, hundreds and hundreds of people share their wishes and what they're working towards. But I'll just take a recent example, something that I heard just yesterday. So in this one um, woman's visualization, she really saw herself living near the beach. She saw herself in a beach community and it, what didn't feel like a vacation necessarily, but she really imagined really changing her life in a dramatic way. And yet the minute we have something that seems big, relocating, um, new jobs, like new things, it can feel incredibly overwhelming. We hit that overwhelm and then we shut down and we don't do anything. We just sit and think, oh no, I just, I just couldn't. And all the reasons why it's actually better and safer to stay right where you are, drop in. Now, in this case, if she were doing day 17, instead of getting stuck in the overwhelm, just the idea of like, you know what, if I could visit a beach community, like what, which one would I want to go to? And maybe she could start researching um, a state and a beach that kind of something that Maybe she also already wanted to go and visit. Maybe she could look up some Airbnbs. Maybe she could see what's happening in terms of festivals or something that she could attend and just get her little, get you know, her feet wet, so to speak, <laughs> literally and proverbially. <laughs> yeah, and hop it on Pinterest. That's what we're doing. What to do yeah. in insert area as we continue yeah. to travel. Exactly. So I think there's a way that we can give ourselves permission to take a tiny step and suddenly we are putting ourselves in the flow of our desires instead of staying stuck in the concepts of like, I just can't, I just can't. True. And I don't know, we, as a society, we're more or less trained for that, 
for that rationale of like, no, not for me. That's for somebody else. I can't fill in all the reasons why. And this teases you to say, well, just do a little thing. How does it make you feel? How did that make you feel? And then you go one step further. You mean answering the questions that we don't want to answer for ourselves, essentially. Yeah, but also making it fun, turning it into a game. If it, it, it's, it's in the same way that, like, let's say you're talking to a good friend and they have an idea. It's easier for us to support and give creative ideas to somebody else than when it's ourself. Because for whatever reason, we've trained ourselves to be the worst critic in the whole world. And we talk to ourselves habitually in a way that is really not productive and not a way that we would talk to a friend. So instead, you're giving yourself this gentle playground to say, well, maybe I could do like one tiny thing and what would happen? You'll see it puts the wheels in motion. One tiny, you know, action steps, just it sparks the next one. So does for my 21 day uh, action step journal, it's towards one specific wish, right? So say I say I do. I actually achieve my wish. I, I get it. I get the goal. My wish came true. Thank you for my, my jades. That's what I'm going to say thank you to. Thank you for my jades and my wish. Can I start a new wish with a new journal in another 21 days? So can each journal and each bracelet be a new wish or desire that you're trying to go to? Absolutely. Absolutely. And the reason why I encourage specificity is because we can want very general things. But when they're general, it's very difficult to take action about, I just want to be happy. You know, your version of happiness is very different from my version of happiness, but also many things make me quote unquote happy. But ironically, when I close my eyes and I've guide, guided so many uh, people through this experience, different aspects come up. And for example, um, let me let me give you another example. In one of my, and I'll tell you about my very big, big wish, because usually when my visualizations are somehow related to this big, big wish, um, but there is a moment that I see myself and I'm laying on the grass. I know that this big, big, big event has already happened and I feel deep satisfaction and I feel the words that come up in my mind are, I feel held by the earth. I literally feel held and I feel the warm sun on my face. My body is relaxed on the grass. I hear laughter and talking in the distance. And this, this feeling is so satisfying. Like it's already done. I did the heavy lifting and I'm enjoying it. Now here's the trick is that I could hold off that sensation until I've achieved fill in the blank. And yet, because I knew from that visualization that a part of my being wants to feel held by the earth wants to feel a sense of satisfaction and completion. So the afternoon, so I had that visualization in the morning. That afternoon, even though I know there's a lot of work between here and there, because I knew that the big event that I'm putting together already happened, I still took a moment, went out to my backyard, and I laid on the grass, and I felt the warm sun on my face, and I breathed and allowed the earth to hold me. And that's kind of the other layer to this is that you realize that you are actually so close to giving yourself right now what you're actually longing for. And I didn't know that that was something that was important. I couldn't remember the last time I laid on my lawn, even though I love, I love, you know, nature and stuff, but that vision showed me that there is a part of me that longs to not attach my relaxation or feeling of satisfaction to an achievement. So I can go, hey, I want that now. And so that's what I've seen people do over and over again. They'll have the experience and then they'll bring that to their life right now and allow that to fuel them up and, and keep them in motion towards their goals. I actually really like that idea. Not sure if I want to lie on my grass because I hate bugs. So there maybe have to be a blanket <laughs> on the grass to have like, you know, that layer, but I'm down to try. <laughs> That is so funny. That is fantastic. Now, what are your thoughts on vision boards, though? So do you do you think that it's, it's a positive way to help with the wish beads? Do you say, like, no, nah, no vision boards at all? What are your thoughts on that? No, you know, I actually think that vision boards are incredibly complementary. In fact, I'm, I've made vision boards in the past. I think they're fantastic. To me, in my own experience, I would make a vision board, I would tuck it somewhere, and then I literally would forget about it. Now, one school of thought 
is that once it's out there, the universe is magically going to just bring these things to you. But I'm also a wildly practical person. So I'm both a vision, someone who believes in visioning and creativity, love all of that. But I also love the feeling of accountability of taking action. So I'm kind of both. I'm a wildly practical person and a very creative visionary person. That is just who I am, which is, of course, why I created a company called Wishbeads. <laughs> but when, if you are someone who, you know, I, who loves vision boards, I say, go for it, make a beautiful vision board, give yourself that pleasure of cutting things out and pasting them. Or now you can even do it digitally online. Or if you have a Pinterest account that is filled with all kinds of visual things, fabulous. But here's the added thing. Take that vision board and almost create a movie title that captures the energy of that. I, I also would add that if it's something very specific uh, about one aspect of your life, even better, the specificity is great. But when you take like a movie title that captures the essence of it, you can write that down and then you wear it. And again, mm. I can't, and the whole idea of wish beads, a visual reminder that is deeply personal. So it's not jewelry that just says inspire or confidence or whatever. It's really yours. It's your energy. It's your signature, your handwriting. When you wear it every day, you have a very actionable um, touchstone throughout the day to bring your mind and focus back to what matters most. And I think all of us are in a place, especially coming out of this last year and a half, where there are so many stressors that are around us all the time. It is very difficult to stay focused, to stay calm, to stay present. We are fighting a barrage of noise and distractions in our very busy modern lives. And for me, when I wear my wish beads, and I do have multiple wishes going at once, it gives me the opportunity to know when I get off balance, I look at my wish beads and I come back. I come back to my center and I come back to, you know, quite frankly, just remembering what I want to focus on, what I want to prioritize in my life. I'm always going to wear my wish beads and thinking about you looking at the sky. And that's going to bring me back to being grounded. And I'm not even like making a joke about it because that's, it's the truth. Like looking will bring you, it's, it's grounding you to go back to what you actually want and what you actually need to be happy because at the end of the day it's all about your happiness right like all your wishes all your goals everything is just so you can live your life and actually say like i was here for a reason and i made my mark and this is how you can make your mark and move forward it is and i do think that wishing is actually an act of selfless giving because and you know this if you are in a happy place and you walk you know you're feeling happy you walk into a room that energy is contagious so whoever you are around it changes the dynamic around you. Whether you're walking into a Starbucks, you're walking into your home, you're walking into your office, that idea that your happiness, your sense of fulfillment is just for yourself is not true. It's, it's, it is actually what we need right now, especially when people are feeling so much stress, so much loss, so much confusion. Uh, your wishes is really a way to create a positive impact in the world. So I, I, I think that sometimes people can think like, well, I just, I'm just going to wish for somebody else, or I wish for my husband, or I wish for my kids and all that. No, 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 no. Let this wish be your wish. It's about you. You deserve it. You deserve to feel happy and fulfilled and successful and all the things. And that is not to be postponed at some point in the future that, you know, you have a story around, allow that energy to be infused into your body, into your mind and heart right now. And it's much easier than you think. So learn more about wish beads, to purchase your wish beads, to start your wishes, or even your 21-day journey with uh, wish work. You can head to wishbeads.com. You can check them out on Facebook at wishbeads, on Instagram at wishbeads.official, and they do have a YouTube channel at wishbeads as well. Alexa, one, thank you for joining us today. Two, I'm actually so excited. I think the way that you made this, this product, the wish beads, and putting the little wish and holding it onto you is so much better than like wearing something in a locket around your neck. And it's so innovative. And the fact that like, I get to write a little piece of paper. I don't know about you, but I'd rather write stuff down than to type it on the computer and all that other stuff because yes. it's not as personal with the da -da 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 -da. And if you write it, I feel like you're really putting work into it. 
That's true. Yeah. Your, your, your handwriting has energy. So you're really anchoring it down in a very physical way. Yeah. It's really been, it's been the wildest journey to bring this from an idea into reality. And my big wish is to have over a million people wishing at once. So creating a live event that is live streamed to really inspire people to take action, to claim their happiness and bring it down to the earth. So I will keep you posted about that. Uh, that's something that we're working on behind the scenes. <laughs> yes, definitely. would love that link. I don't know how many people you can get on Zoom doing that at once, but like I'm down to show up not virtually and, and wish yep. together. <laughs> yep, 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 yep. It's not, it's don't, don't worry, it's not happening this year, but it's in the works. So I will definitely keep you posted because- you know what? Why not? We can wish big, right? True. Like, no, the, who's stopping us? <laughs> Nobody. Usually Wait. ourselves. Yeah, like, <laughs> we're, we're stopping ourselves. So if no one else is going to stop you, look, so the only person that's going to stop you is you. So put another right. wish beat on saying your event's going to happen and I will come. <laughs> that's, the that's the one. That's the one. It's already there. <laughs> wear it every day. Yes. So true. So true. But thank you. I'm, I'm so delighted to share wish beads with you and your audience. And I can't wait to see you make your own wishes come true. Oh, I'm so excited. I may upgrade to a different color. Not going to lie. I do love the gray, but I want a little bit of a vibrance in my life. I'm usually in the, like, the nudes, the blacks, the whites, the grays, but I think I need more color in my life. So this is how right. I'm going to you know branch out. Perfect. Well, Alexa, once again, thank you so much for showing us and introducing us to Wish Beads. You are the founder, you are the CEO, and created such an incredible piece of jewelry as well as more of like affirmations and goals. So thank you for that. That is a wrap on another episode of the Brand Ambassador Select Podcast. I'm your host, Lenore. Make sure to hit that subscribe button so you never miss one. More at brandambassadorselect.com, and we will see you next time. <laughs>